Our very special guest is a very good friend, Dr. Dorian Warren, who's now with the Roosevelt Institute Think Tank and MSNBC contributor. Welcome again to Reaching Out. Thank you, Mr. Floyd. There's so much to discuss, with, but before I begin, let me just ask you, you are with the Roosevelt Institute Think Tank, and you're a fellow. Yes, sir. Tell us what that is. So the Roosevelt Institute is a think tank focused on bringing forward the values of Franklin Eleanor Roosevelt into the 21st century and making them relevant for all Americans. And so I focus there a lot on how to fix our economy so that workers, and especially workers of color, have opportunity and access to good jobs. Okay. There's always so much to discuss. Uh, let me, just since you mentioned Eleanor Roosevelt, what was her legacy? Mm. What was the project that she did that everybody says this was Eleanor Roosevelt? The United Nations. The United Nations. The United Nations. People don't really realize that she was instrumental in the in the conceptualization of the UN, the design. She was at the founding UN meeting, the first convention, so to speak. She is responsible for our system of international global cooperation. Very good. Uh, our mayor, Mayor Bill de Blasio, is coming up on his first two years in office. Can you give us your assessment uh -oh. of his uh, <laughs> administration? So you want me to grade him? Is that what you're saying, Mr. Boyd? Please grade him. All right, him. all right. Uh, you know, I'd probably, give, I'd probably give him a B plus. Okay. And here's why. Okay. I think on on several of the issues uh, that particularly working New Yorkers care about, he's been pretty good. So universal pre-K for everybody. Okay. Uh, done. It's being implemented. It's a great thing for New Yorkers. Advocating for raising the minimum wage. Uh, obviously, the governor beat him to the punch on that, but he was out there in front first before the governor decided this was a good idea. Uh, now, there's some other issues. The reason why it's a B plus is, and I'll list two. One is the issue of policing and police accountability. I think he didn't handle that in the best way, both in terms of citizens who have been subject to police abuse, right. but also I think he could have handled, frankly, the police unions and the commissioner a, a little bit better. So on that, I think I give him probably a C minus just on that. Okay. Um, the other thing is he has a lot of ambition in a good sense in terms of national politics and wanting to set the agenda for national presidential candidates in terms of income inequality and some other issues. And that took him away from New York, I think, a little too much. I think yeah. we should have seen much more of the mayor here in the city focus on governing the city rather than in Iowa or some other places. So overall grade, B+, plus. I think he can do much, much better. He has it in him, but he has to really work the politics much better. Not to mention the other I word, Italy. And it, That's right. That's right. Okay. Oh, we mentioned the police, and I think it might be a great time, to, mm. uh, not a great time, but a, just an appropriate time to bring up uh, Chicago, mm -hmm. um, the shooting of the young man in Chicago, and now the uh, indictment and first-degree murder charges against the police officer who yes. committed that shooting. So 17-year-old Laquan McDonald shot 16 times by one officer. Um, 14 of those 16 shots, he was already on the ground, um, and it took over a year for an indictment of the officer by the Cook County District Attorney, and she only, we think— indicted and charged, I should say, charged the the officer with first-degree murder. By the way, that's the first time in over 30 years a Chicago police officer has been charged with murder. Uh, she only did that because a judge ordered the release of the dash cam video that captured everything that happened that night. And what we now know is that the dash cam video tells a different story than the police reports who claim that uh, the 17 year old was lunging toward the officers that they feared for their lives, which was now we know not the case. And and it wouldn't be, you know, there've been protests in Chicago and I care deeply about this because this is my hometown. There, there wouldn't be so much anger and outrage if this was an isolated incident. But we know that it's not an isolated incident. This is a pattern and, and we know this here in New York. I mean, this is in cities all across the country. This is a South major Carolina, problem. South Carolina, North Charleston, every, you know, yeah. it, it just, it, in the last year and a half, we've just seen time and time again unarmed black people being killed by the police. You know, there was a just there's just a theory that this was 
not released right away because of what happened in Baltimore. Everything happened around yes. the same time. Yes. And if the public would have seen this video at the time of Ferguson, at the time, mm -hmm. oh, we, there's too many incidents we're bringing up. The That's time right. of Baltimore, uh, the time of uh, North Charleston, South yep. Carolina. That's right. To have this video released then would have had a catastrophic effect on this country. On the country, and by the way, and on something very specific, the mayoral race at the time. Rahm Emanuel was running for re-election right around the time that this incident happened, and, and he knew that if this tape was released, this would greatly imperil his re-election chances, especially among black voters in the city of Chicago. Wow, everything is timing and politics. Timing and you. politics. Uh, we're in the midst of a presidential primary. <laughs> and uh, although New York is not considered a battleground state, I'm laughing, we still need to be paying close attention. Yes. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Republican race and the emergence of Donald Trump and uh, Dr. Carson as polies? <laughs> but before you give me your thoughts, I'm laughing because I think it's great theater. Yes. I think it's great yes. theater. I tune yes. in to watch watch the comments, listen to it. Yes. I, I never thought politics could be so funny and so entertaining. It is uh, mm -hmm. funny and entertaining, and it is uh, America's id is coming out in the sense in terms of the Republican primary. Donald Trump has been at the top of the polls since he launched his campaign over the summer, and he's been doing that by what we would call dog whistling, uh, sending racially coded signals, particularly to white voters around immigrants, for instance, and uh, most recently around potential refugees from, from Syria. And, and it's just, it's, it's mean-spirited. It is not in tune with American values. But for a certain segment of the Republican primary, that is precisely who's paying attention and, who, and for whom that message is resonating. To call Mexicans rapists and criminals is just, that's not an American value. No. And we are a nation of immigrants after all. So to be so anti-immigrant in this moment, is our immigration system broken? Yes. But to be so anti-immigrant as a way to rile up racial fear and anxiety, um, that's not a long-term winning strategy. It might work in the short term, right. but it's not going to work in the general election, frankly. So it's 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 odd that you know Donald Trump's been at the top. Ben Ben Carson's been right behind him most most recently, although he's starting to sink a little bit in the polls. He's Ted starting, Cruz is starting, starting to rise. To, he's starting to drop. Asking one foreign policy. Uh, question and he's plummeting. He doesn't know the answer, and and it's a shame because I used to be a Ben Carson fan in the '90s. Dr. Carson was a hero to a lot of us. You know, he's the first uh, black neurosurgeon who uh, who separated conjoined twins. Um, he wrote a best-selling book. There's a movie made after him. Even um, it's, he has a very inspiring story. I think he should stay out of politics. Well, that's it. We, you know, I, I wouldn't try to go play basketball in the NBA. So I mean, you got to know your limitation. So we can lead Dr. Ben Carson as being a great, uh, be a great doctor, right? Thank you. And, and that's where we we have his legacy that's right, right there. That's but right. politics is just not his field. It's not a spiel. And I'll tell you, you know, I, I believe if, if he was a white neurosurgeon, he wouldn't have been as high in the polls, frankly. I think for a lot of Republican voters, there is this appeal that, oh, well, he's he's black and he's speaking our language. So therefore, we, you know, let's support him. And, and as soon as he, as you said, opened his mouth around oh, foreign man. policy, boop. But you think he polls. would ask somebody, you know, you know you think, those questions are coming. Study, prepare. Yeah, you want to be the leader of this country, you need to know what you're talking about. Yeah, just come up with a strategy. That's right. Come up with a strategy, stick to it, stay to it, and get your advisors. The one thing you can, you can say about Donald Trump, when he speaks, it feels real and genuine and authentic, as if he believes in I don't know if he does or not. He's a great entertainer and well, a, and I think a he had TV a of, actor. but He had a lot of people until he said he saw thousands of Muslims celebrating. Uh, uh, maybe he just got the facts wrong. It wasn't in New Jersey. Right. The, the pictures were shown somewhere abroad. Exactly. It was shown in, in, the, uh, in those countries. That's where I saw people celebrating. Right. I did right. see that. Yes. He probably yes. got the facts wrong because he said he's, New Jersey. He's, he's been getting a lot but, of facts wrong but, but on it happened. purpose. It happened, but it didn't happen here in this That's country. Right. It happened over there That's in, right. in the Middle East. But it whips up. It whips up uh, the frenzy for a lot of his voters. You know, yeah. it, it is a strategy. It's not a, you know, it, it, it's a mean and, and not and it's not a strategy that unites people. On the Democratic side, most of the pundits seem to see uh, Hillary Clinton as our um, ultimate uh, Democratic uh, nominee. If something were to happen mm -hmm. to her, mm -hmm. who do you see stepping in that role? <laughs> That's a great question. You know, Bernie Sanders has been trailing her 
for much of the primary. Uh, although in New Hampshire, he's a little closer, but but she's she's definitely the the content the front runner, and and she's all but we've all but coronated her with the nomination. You're right. If she falls, who's left? But we have Bernie Sanders. We have Martin O'Malley, the former mayor of Baltimore, the former governor of Maryland, who is his campaign has just not taken off. I mean, voters. I forgot he was not, in the race. He's still in the race. <laughs> exactly. Right. People don't be like, who? So, you know, he's still sticking around. I, I think, honestly, you know, Vice President Joe Biden spent the summer deliberating on whether he was going to jump in the race or not. He ultimately decided not to. If something were to happen to Hillary. Joe Biden. I think he'd jump in. I, I, I thought the same. Yep. Yeah. And probably could win. And probably could win. Yeah, absolutely. Could win. Wouldn't you love to see a debate with him and Trump? Biden versus Trump? That'd be fun you to know, watch. That would be great theater. <laughs> it certainly would be. I have to get the edge to uh, Joe Biden. Though, I think I think Joe would give him a run for his money. Yeah, Joe Biden would not would not back down from exactly. Donald Trump. And he would say he's a Mr. Trump, with all due respect, exactly. you are a, a great television personality, yes. but you are wrong on the facts. Yes. And the facts will be the president, not your opinion. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I, I can see that happening. Uh, you're listening to Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237, and we're having so much fun here with our good friend, Dr. Dorian Warren, who is now a fellow with the uh, Roosevelt Institute. You have a show that's on MSNBC, but it's only online. Yes. And you're going to tell us how to get that show. It's called uh, Nerding Out? Nerding Out. So as you know, uh, I'm a contributor at MSNBC. I uh, fill in for Melissa Harris-Perry when she's on vacation on her show. And then the nickname for her show is, is Nerdland because it's a little nerdy and wonky. And so I have a little baby brother show on the website. So MSNBC.com slash Nerding Out. And I and it's a weekly show. It's it's once a week. We got to get you on there, Mr. Floyd. I would love to we come on there. You know what? I would wear my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like this. You know, we 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 spend about uh, fifty minutes on a topic, and we try to go deep and and get some experts on. So especially in terms of what's happening in the city, I'd oh, love sure. to have I, you. I on. would love love to come on, please. This is Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237 Teamsters, and for this segment of Reaching Out, unfortunately, it's come to a close, and our very special guest was Dr. Dorian Warren of uh, the Roosevelt Institute. Thank you once again for Thank coming you. on Reaching Thank Out. Thank you. Thank you.